Hey everyone, we're doing an extra video this week to celebrate the opening of the elevated guideway for the Davenport Diamond grade separation project. After a couple of short delays to ensure the safety for trains traveling on the new elevated guideway, Metrolinx was able to open the guideway for regular service yesterday morning. Over the weekend, crews worked to install the track connections between the elevated guideway and the at-grade track. The new track connections and elevated guideway will allow for more frequent GO train service and reduced noise at the rail junction shared with Canadian Pacific Railway. On Friday, March 31st, around 11 p.m., the last GO train traveled north along the at-grade section of track from Bloor to Davenport, marking the end of train service on the at-grade alignment and also the closure of the last downtown railroad crossing used frequently by GO Transit. Over the weekend, crews were hard at work building the new tracks that now connect the current rail corridor to the elevated guideway. These connections were made just north of Davenport Road and south of Bloor. With the tracks now connected to the elevated guideway, the at-grade track being replaced is now disconnected from the rest of the line and will be fully removed in the coming months. On the morning of April 1st, work to remove the crossing gates at the Wallace Avenue Railroad crossing took place as trains won't be using the crossing anymore. With the tracks on the elevated guideway connected to the main line, trains were ready to use the elevated guideway with the first GO trains being used to perform tests on Monday, April 3rd. Two trains were brought in for testing in the morning and a testing of emergency evacuation proce procedures took place in the afternoon. With testing complete, the first revenue service train to use the elevated guideway was Berry Line Trip 6504. Early Tuesday morning on a dark and rainy day, the first Berry Go Line train pulled into Dansby Park Station, already filled with passengers who, whether they knew it or not, were about to be the first people to ride on the elevated guideway. On board the train were a couple of other transit fans who came along for the ride. Approaching Davenport Road, the train split off of the old alignment and started going up the embankment onto the guideway. It's hard to see much with the dark sky, but from the lower level of the train, we can see the noise walls off to the side with space left for a second track that will be installed soon. Going to the upper level, riders get a nice and rather cool view of Toronto's West End from above, which I'm sure would look even better in the daytime. Once the train reaches Wallace, we enter the embankment and start to go back down to ground level to connect with the existing corridor just south of Bloor. Even though service has been switched to the elevated guideway, there's still work to be done with the second track still needing to be installed and the linear park underneath the guideway can be built in the coming months. The at-grade diversion track is also starting to be removed with track removal work starting a couple days ago on April 3rd and will continue until May 1st. Because it was still so early in the morning, not much was visible from the train and it didn't feel like we were riding on a new train line. Granted, the ride was a bit quieter than usual. But that's okay, because this project is now largely complete and is about removing the intersection with Canadian Pacific's freight train tracks, which will mean it trains every 10 to 15 minutes on the Barry Line. It's not a very noticeable change for most riders, but will make using transit so much easier for everyone. Thanks for watching.